What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we are going to be discussing the inhalation medication administration route. Let's get started. So when we talk about inhalation um, administration, we're particularly talking about medications that are inhaled into the lungs. And there's three different types of administration when it comes to these inhaled medications. We have pressurized meter dosed inhalers, which can be known as PMDI or just simply MDI, is what you'll primarily hear in the hospital. And that's typically taken first before anything else. Then we have the dry powder inhalers, that's our DPI, and those are typically taken after the MDI is taken. And of course, you're going to see a lot of these when you're in the hospital is nebulizers. We use these quite a bit, a lot um, when it comes to our inhaled administration of medications. So let's break this down further and see what's going on with this medication route. So how are we going to administer inhaled medications, specifically our MDIs and our DPIs? So you're gonna begin by removing the cap from the MDI and chamber. You're going to insert the MDI into the open part of the chamber if it hasn't already been done. Um, that's usually the opposite end of the mouthpiece. So when you remove the little mouthpiece, that is the part that the patient puts into their mouth, they squeeze it down, and that's how the medication is administered. You can also attach a spacer as needed. A lot of times, patients have difficulty following instructions, so that spacer gives them a little extra time to kind of aerosolize that um, inhaled medication into that spacer so that they can take it all in. So spacers can be really great for some patients. Next, the patient wants to place the mouthpiece of the chamber between their teeth and seal their lips around it completely. You don't want any of that medication leaking out. The patient is going to exhale completely prior to administration because we don't want that exhalation taking place as they should be inhaling the medication. So the patient is going to exhale completely. They are going to press down the canister, that's the top part of the MDI or the DPI is kind of on the side, once by holding their thumb near the mouthpiece and index finger on the top. They're going to breathe in slowly and completely through their mouth. We don't want any nose breathing. We want this to go directly into the lungs through the mouth. You're gonna hold, um, they're gonna ask them to hold their breath for 10 seconds, count slowly and allow the medication to reach the airway of the lungs, also known as the alveolar sacs. You're going to repeat this process for each puff ordered by the provider, and you wanna make sure that you wait one minute in between puffs so that way the medication can distribute. If you're using a corticosteroid MDI, a lot of patients might be using these, it is highly recommended that you make sure that they rinse their mouth and gargle with water or mouthwash after each use because you don't want them developing any kind of um, yeast in their mouth. Always use a chamber when you're doing steroid MDIs. It really just helps um, because if they're directly putting it in their mouth and that medication keeps getting on their tongue, they can actually develop um, uh, uh, a yeast infection on the top of their tongue or in their mouth. So you really wanna make sure that in order to alleviate this from happening, that um, you make sure that you have that spacer. The word that I'm looking for that a lot of you may not know is called thrush. So if you have time, make sure that you research about it because it is something that's very uncomfortable for the patient when it comes to these particular kinds of inhalers that have corticosteroids in them. Finally, let's talk about the administration of nebulizers. It's going to be a little bit different depending on if the patient has their own nebulizer or if you're using a nebulizer from the hospital. This is particularly um, a nebulizer when it comes to home use, but it can also follow a lot of the same routes when it comes to hospital use. So to begin with, you wanna make sure that you wash your hands really well. As always, hand hygiene is so important right now, especially in the current environment of our um, country. So you absolutely wanna make sure that you're washing your hands. You wanna connect the hose to the air compressor. That's going to be what helps push that medication out. You wanna fill the medicine cup with the prescription and you really wanna prevent um, spilling of any of that medication. So you really want to close that medicine cup up tightly, right? We don't want anything leaking or spilling out. And you always, you, you always hold, I'm sorry, the mouthpiece straight up and down. 
you're going to attach the hose and the mouthpiece um, to the medication cup. So you kind of have like a little bit of a hose and then there's a little medication cup and then the air compressor pushes that air in and kind of creates like a vapor type uh, medication administration. You want to place the mouthpiece on the mouth, close the lips around it just like we did with our MDI and DPI. Uh, and all the medications at that point you're breathing in through your mouth is going into the lungs. So like I said, you breathe through the mouth, all the medication is used, and this typically takes between 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's really difficult for small children to be able to comply with these types of nebulizers. I'm not saying that all of them can, so there has been some children who do it very well, but not all of them are very comfortable with it. So typically for small children, we, we usually use a mask that has the little medicine cup attached to it. So that way they don't have to have something in their mouth. It's going to be uncomfortable. They're probably not going to like having something on their face. It's just a better way of medication administration when it comes to small children. Once you're done with the nebulizer treatment, you wanna make sure that you turn off the machine when you're done and really wash that cup with the medication out as well as a mouthpiece with water and allow it to air dry until the next treatment. I hope that this video was helpful in understanding inhalation medication administration. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. If you haven't done so already, subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. And as always, head over to www.nursechon.com where there'll be additional resources to help you pass your exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.